it's very important to the process of understanding Google Cloud and pass the certification exam that you go through the question and attempt answering it yourself first. So pause the video, work through the question. We'll catch up in just a little while and I'll show you how I do it. In this project scenario, Monker Games wants to set up a continuous delivery pipeline. The architecture includes many small services that they want to be able to update and roll back quickly. Monker Games has the following requirements. Services are deployed redundantly across multiple regions in the US and Europe. Only front-end services are exposed on the public internet. They can reserve a single front-end IP for their fleet of services. And deployment artifacts are immutable. It's so a fairly straightforward requirement to set up a continuous delivery pipeline where we are able to update multiple services quickly. So we are ideally looking for CI-CD related solutions as part of the continuous delivery pipeline. There are many small services and they have to be updated and even roll back quickly. So whatever solution we choose should ease deployment, updates, rollback, all of Services are also deployed re redundantly across multiple regions. So this serves a global audience and we will have to replicate exactly the same deployment in multiple regions. Only front-end servers are exposed on the public internet, which means that this is a multi-tier application with only the web tier open to the public. They can reserve a single front-end IP. So the production or the ops or deployment team has access to only one IP at which all users can come. So the solution we choose ideally should be global and it should have a single Anycast address right? such that across the world wherever you are when you access one single IP address it takes you to the server closest to where you are. Deployment artifacts are immutable which means that once built or deployed, they should not be changed. Right? Also, there should not be ideally direct access to these installed artifacts after it is deployed. Right? People should, shouldn't have the chance to go say, update a script that is running in production. Moreover, when something is built and it is tagged with a particular version, you shouldn't be able to update that version, but retain the same tag, which means now it looks like there are two different functionality for the very same tag version. So our deployment artifacts have to be immutable. Given those considerations, let's look at the options we have. Option A, use cloud storage, cloud data flow and compute engine to have this continuous delivery pipeline. Now cloud storage seems to match none of these requirements, right? There is no specific requirement for file storage. You could probably store some of the build output, but um, not really going to be very useful as part of the continuous delivery pipeline. So cloud storage is not a strong suitor for this requirement. Cloud data flow. This again, no particular requirement that matches, right? We are not looking for data processing, whether it's serverless or streaming or batch data. There's no requirement for that. So cloud data flow also does not apply. Compute engine. We could run some of these build processes and deployment processes as part of VMs directly, but direct VM access is not the first choice in, in this particular requirement. So compute engine, again, of course, we are going to be using VMs as part of something or the other, but I can't see anything directly available in Compute Engine that would be a primary choice. So none of the options here suit our requirements and we will reject option A. Option B suggests that we use cloud storage, app engine and cloud load balancing. So like we said earlier, cloud storage, there's not a strong matching requirement but it could be a place where we store say build artifacts right? or maybe where we store code. So it's possible, but it's too much of a stretch to assume that this would be useful. So I'm still rejecting cloud storage as a reasonable option among these. App Engine. 
App Engine suits certain requirements, right? We want to be able to deploy multiple services to probably migrate them, uh, migrate the traffic that goes to them, you know, um, little by little, and also to update and roll them back. So App Engine is very suitable for the kind of requirements that we have here, multiple services, the ability to update and roll back. Then cloud load balancing. Cloud load balancing provides a single Anycast IP that is globally available, right? Wherever you are, it looks like you've got one IP that you can access and that will take you directly to the closest region for you. So this is absolutely something that is suitable for the requirements. Primarily in the sub requirements, the first, second and third, where we have multiple uh, regions, where we have only the front end servers are exposed to the public internet and we have a single front end IP. So all that is suited very well by using cloud load balancing. So App Engine and cloud load balancing seem to be good for us. However, a load balancer works with compute and Kubernetes instances as backend but not with App Engine. So we can't combine cloud load balancing with App Engine and therefore even though they individually suit some of the options, together they are not a fit for what we are doing. Therefore we will eliminate option B. Option C suggests that we use container registry, Google Kubernetes engine and cloud load balancing. We already saw that cloud load balancing is very suitable for our requirement because it provides a single Anycast IP and becomes a, the one point where all users can access our front end. Container registry is very useful because we are able to store container images, Docker images. Right? So you can have multiple small services, each with their own container image stored in the container registry, which can then be immutable. Right. So we need these artifacts, these deployment artifacts to be mutable, which means that we should be able to tag them and which we can do in container registry. So once you tag them, you don't change them anymore and you only update the tag version the next time you update something. So container registry allows us to have multiple versions of these services as immutable artifacts. These container images also can be run through the CICD pipeline for deployment, update and rollback. And where could you deploy all of these container images? On Kubernetes uh, and the managed solution, Google Kubernetes Engine on Google Cloud. Right. So pulling all of these together, cloud load balancing will give us a front end. Container registry keeps these artifacts for each of the services that we have. And we can then deploy them as part of uh, the uh, continuous delivery pipeline on Google Kubernetes Engine. And load balancing also works with GKE instances. Therefore, considering all the requirements, option C to use container registry, Google Kubernetes Engine, and cloud load balancing is very suitable. Therefore, this is a very strong contender, and we are going to mark that as something we'll come back to why we'll go look at the last option, option D. Option D suggests that you use cloud functions, cloud pops up and cloud deployment manager. None of these provide a way to get a single IP address for the user. Right? So we don't have immediately a suitability for the single front end IP. Cloud functions are useful when you have multiple small services which we can update and roll back. So cloud functions suit that requirement. Cloud pops up can scale a lot and absorb a lot of growth, but there is no matching requirement in this case. We are not looking at the uh, user use case in this uh, particular requirement, but more on the continuous delivery pipeline, where pops up is not a strong suitor for this set of requirements. Deployment manager, it would be somewhat useful to have repeatable deployment across multiple regions, but there is not a strong point for it that matches the requirements here. Therefore, the combination of these options really doesn't work for us and we can eliminate option D. That leaves us with option C 
which is to use container registry, Google Kubernetes engine, and cloud load balancing as the right answer to be doing a continuous delivery pipeline for Mount Work Games. All right, now it's time for you to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Go ahead, do that right now, because there's loads of great content coming up for learning Google Cloud and preparing for the certifications. Mm -hmm.